finding an SUV with serious off-road ability is probably more difficult than you would have thought. Thankfully, there are still some brands that actually know their way around the rough stuff. Today, we've brought two of our picks from the medium SUV segment from manufacturers that actually know a thing or two about off-road. I've chosen the Jeep Cherokee Trailhawk because let's face it, anything with a Jeep badge has got to be good off-road. And I've chosen the Land Rover Discovery Sport because Land Rover is a brand that's always been about capability. So it should be able to handle anything we throw at it, right? Well, we'll have to see about that, mate. Now here's why I think my Cherokee is going to win and why therefore I'm smarter than you in selecting it. I have a rear diff lock and I also have low range. That is proper off-road equipment. If you get stuck in your posh little British Land Rover, I can pull you out with these. They're tow hooks, but they're proper off-road tow hooks. Well, okay, I don't have as many toys as you do, Trent, but what I do have is a whopping, thumping, torquey turbo diesel engine where you've got a high-pitched Revy V6. And I know we've both got those terrain selection systems, but I'm convinced that Land Rover has the advantage in that department. Okay, well it's Jeep first, so let's jump in that. I'm gonna take you for a drive, and we'll see how far we can get in the Cherokee. So this is a typical British hillside here, Matt. A Little bit of mud, a little bit wet, a bit of slippery grass. In theory, this should have more trouble than your Land Rover, because this is American and your Land Rover's British. Okay, so you've got Sand and mud mode. Yes, I do. You've got your rear diff lock on. Yeah, and low range. And low range. Yes. Let's have a look. A little bit. Wow. Okay, a little bit more. Sure, traction's on. It says we're doing 60 k's an hour. It feels like 60 feet a second. Ah, oh, it stopped. Oh, we were so close. Oh, yeah. We were so close. We've got one last attempt at this hill. Go baby! Go baby! <laughs> He's made it! What I like about the Jeep is how it manages to gently put its drive to the ground. Just in, in low range, just in drive, it's very smooth. It's actually very comfortable. The suspension's got plenty of compliance. And it seems to do the off-road stuff really quite well. Yeah, we need to be aware there too that both these vehicles don't have a lot of ground clearance because they're road-focused SUVs. Yeah. Now Trent, hill descent control, you're a fan or not? Not a fan of it. Uh, I don't like the way it can have a tendency to hop and skip yeah. sometimes as it's braking traction when it goes down. So I prefer, with this sort of stuff that's particularly precarious, I prefer to just crawl down on the brake. I've got yeah. the car in drive yeah. and I'm just letting the brakes do the work. That was enlightening. Your turn. Let's just make sure that ESC is completely off. I'm going to turn off hill descent control just in case. Right. I'm in mud and ruts. I'm in drive. Good. Let's find out how it goes. The best of British, huh? Nice and gentle, nice and gentle, no cheating. And here it goes. Hey! <laughs> Tell you what, you've sent some mud out there, but you've had no forward progress. Oh no! <laughs> Stop. Now, I have to say that once again, the ride on this vehicle off-road is impressive. We said it about the Jeep, but with this vehicle, it's definitely impressive because this handles better on-road than the Jeep does. Yeah, you can hear that it's got ground clearance issues. Yeah, it's touching down a little bit. This is a little stiffer at the sharper end of the bumps, isn't it? It feels like a little bit. Yeah. I think there might be a little bit more tire to the yeah. Jeep, so a little bit more sidewall to bounce off. Where the Jeep has really peaky power, this doesn't. This no, is, it's, it's creamy. Lot, like yeah, it, it's a lot smoother. You get a more car-like ride. So I've still got the hill descent control engaged, right. and it is it is intervening a little bit, Yeah, but I'm also controlling throttle and brake. So Matt, how did you feel being bogged all day in the Discovery Sport? I did get bogged, but there were times when the Jeep didn't shine so brightly on the muddy stuff as well. We both know that that comes down to tyres, and a lot of the Disco Sports problems came down to those tyres. 
Uh, I was impressed with it in plenty of other ways though, and as I was with the Jeep. Well, look, I think you're right about tyres, and we learnt that, that tyres are the limiting factor. The Jeep would be even more capable with tyres. I think the Disco is let down by the lack of low range. The other thing that we learnt is that this is particularly good off-road. The Discovery is definitely the better on-road vehicle, so you can weigh that up depending on what your preference is. I guess what we learnt today as well is that in the SUV segment, or the soft rotor segment as we call it, some vehicles are a whole lot more capable than you might have thought.